Welcome back to Jersey Matters. It's a common story across the state. A school district has plans for in-class learning only to find out they're not going to have enough teachers. That's what happened in Freehold Barrow. Here's the superintendent of schools, Rocco Tomasic. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. I, I understand you've had some difficult choices to make. Where are you at with the Freehold schools right now? Well, we in Freehold Borough are going to start 100% virtually. Uh, since the governor issued Executive Order 175, we reassessed our situation and find that there's five issues that we need to resolve before we can shift our hybrid plan. Yeah, your, your plan was to be hybrid, and then you ran into issues. Now, in the press, it sounds like one of the major issues, and maybe the biggest issue, you tell me, is that many of the teachers and staff just weren't going to show up. They were either taking a leave of absence or days off, right? Uh, that's correct. Under the new law that extended uh, greater um, opportunities for leave and accommodations through the end of the year, uh, the staff, uh, in many cases, once their own children in their home district uh, were going to be placed home, then they had a reason to put in for child rearing. Or the other common issue is uh, some underlying medical condition uh, that they were asking for an accommodation to work from home. I know you can't get into uh, personnel and what people said, but I think you can go by percentages, uh, and maybe you don't know this, but I'll ask anyway. Of the teachers that you had, and, and you can tell me how many that is, how many were saying that they had underlying conditions? How many were saying that they just had children and other issues at home? Yes, I have about 170 teachers, and I had about 34 who asked for some type of accommodation. And that was pretty much evenly split uh, between those who needed an accommodation for child care versus those who needed an accommodation based on some underlying medical condition. Because of circumstances, you've had to change several times. You went to from in-person learning to a hybrid to all remote learning. And that's difficult for parents. They have to deal with the same things that the teachers are dealing with, with child care and making other plans at work. I, you must have heard from parents, they must be upset. Uh, yes, uh, they were uh, quite straightforward in their um, dissatisfaction in some cases uh, for the exact situation that you articulated. We um, received the guidance on how we were to reopen in late June. Uh, we proceeded all during the summer um, knowing that we had to get our hybrid plan out to the parents one month before the school opened. So for us, that was August 7th. And then when we put the plan out saying that we would come back on a hybrid plan and uh, parents knew that they had uh, exactly how they, they had to cover their childcare needs, they went about that situation. And then a week later, uh, because of the issuance of 175, we in the district had to say, well, wait a minute, we're not going to do that. We're instead, we're going to stay uh, full remote because we've got these issues that we previously weren't allowed to uh, use, but now we can. And so it did create a lot of frustration. Uh, and we even have had um, parents leave the district, uh, put their children in uh, private school or homeschool them uh, because of their frustration. Is your feeling that most most parents want their children back in school? That was our statistics when we uh, surveyed the students, I mean the parents, we asked them that very question. And we had uh, a vast majority, 70% wanted them in school to some capacity. Uh, so we, that was clearly the data that we had indicated that there was a preference for parents to get back into school. How long will you be 100% remote learning? Well, since uh, three of the issues are contingent on either the Department of Education changing the requirement and or backfitting some expensive solutions, we're not totally sure, but we've put it down that we would do a comprehensive um, reassessment after the end of the first marking period, which would be um, November 12th. Uh, but possibly um, there is some 
suggestion that if uh, money's forthcoming, as the governor had said that he has some money coming to districts to um, help open the schools, if that money is sufficient to solve uh, some of the problems that we have, that would be good. In other cases, uh, some of the concerns we have are due to conflicting guidance in the uh, mandates that we have, whereas one part of the mandate says it is a requirement and another part says that it is. When you went through all of the scenarios, is it possible that you just went with the one that was the safest for you, the one that was the safest for, I guess, everybody? Well, it certainly was the safest. Um, that was certainly the sense of our Board of Education, is that if there was some question about whether we should be opening, that we should be uh, erring on the side of caution and uh, start 100% virtual until uh, these issues uh, sort themselves out. So uh, clearly, uh, we had placed safety uh, more preeminently than we did convenience, but underscoring that we do want to get the kids back into school because we know that we could do a better job uh, having uh, at least some portion of in-person instruction. So it certainly is our goal to get there as quickly as possible. And your goal is not to be remote for the entire year. You don't see that as a scenario right now. I, I don't see that. I, I think in many cases with some um, uh, thoroughly looking at the concerns that we have, that with some money and with some clarification of rules, uh, we might be able to be back uh, within weeks. Uh, obviously, even if today I was allowed to go back into school, I, I, I have to give a little bit of warning to the parents, at least three weeks, four weeks, just so that they could reset up their, um, their childcare concerns. And we have a hundred things to do too. We'd have to restart the crossing guards. We'd have to, um, uh, bring in procedures into the school that are currently not in process because we're totally remote. But I, I would hope that this could be resolved within our first marking period. Wonderful. Well, good luck to you, sir. I know it's a difficult job that you have and you've been navigating quite a summer and you still have some navigation to go. Best of luck to you. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate it. That was Rocco Tomasic, Superintendent of Public Schools in Freehold Borough. When we come right back, all uniformed police officers may soon be required to wear body cameras. We'll have the details when Jersey Matters continues.